Hello and welcome to Spotlight on Bennington. I'm John Shanahan, the Downtown Director of the Better Bennington Corporation. And today, Alicia Romack and I have brought you to a location you probably haven't seen yet. Uh, we're inside the Bennington Tennis Center bubble right now. And we're gonna introduce you to uh, Seth uh, Gabriel, who is the owner, uh, his tennis bro, Dan Rowe, and then show you a little bit about what goes on here. It's gonna be a great show. So thanks for joining us. Uh, before we get into that though, I just have a little bit of uh, news and some information on upcoming activities that I wanted to talk about. Uh, first of all, uh, the BBC's big event, it's uh, the 26th annual Mayfest Arts and Craft Festival. That this year is on May 28th. As always, that's the Saturday of Memorial Day weekend. Um, as, last year, or as with last year and years before, we have about 20 different food vendors, over 100 artisans and crafters. Uh, all the nonprofits locally join us and they have some activities and some information. And we also have seven stages where we have over 15 entertainers performing throughout the day. Uh, as a reminder, it's free. It goes from 10 a.m. until 5 p.m. So make sure uh, your calendar for Memorial Day weekend includes downtown Bennington. You can spend about three or four hours down there with all the activity that's going on. And this year we have a new addition, which is the very end of the show. Um, we're going to change the way the uh, show is set up. Instead of the vendors being in the middle, they're going to be on the sides. And we're putting all the uh, fun activities like the dunking booth, the rock climbing wall, um, some alpacas that we bring into town. And it's going to be like a little carnival. Your kids are going to love that section. Um, plus we have some new food vendors down there. Uh, Apple Barn is joining us and they have this new uh, product that they're um, debuting at Mayfest. So make sure you stop down and see that. Plus a couple of street vendors. So that end of the show should be a lot of fun this year. So make sure when you do come to Mayfest you get all the way down toward uh, the Mexican Connection, Benners, uh, Bagels and Whatnosh, First Baptist Church. That whole area is going to be loaded with activity this year. Um, that's Mayfest. And if you'd like more information, you can go to betterbennington.com, click on the Mayfest under the events button, and it'll tell you everything and who the vendors are going to be. Uh, this year, Bennington is uh, fortunate to be the host for the first time ever, and most likely the last time ever, uh, the Great Race. If you're not familiar with the Great Race, it's a, a cross-country automobile race that's been going since 1908. And this year there's about 100 cars in it. Hemmings Motor News is one of the big sponsors and they have a vehicle that's in the race. Uh, so Hemmings, when they were in the race, they approached the, the owner of the show, which is Coker Tire, and um, that was a tennis ball, and uh, asked them to include Vermont in the great race uh, course because Vermont's never been part of the great race before. Not only did they include Vermont, they chose Bennington as the finish line. So on June 17, starting at 2 o'clock, downtown Bennington, uh, Main Street will be closed. Uh, the cameras from all over the country will be here to watch us host the finish line for the great race. This year, the race starts in Chattanooga, Tennessee. And as I mentioned, it ends here right in Bennington. They're going to come across from Saratoga, down through Manchester, and then on to Main Street where there's a finish line. Put it in your calendar. June 17, we'll do some promotions in the newspaper to remind you. But we'll have, a, we'll have some entertainment, uh, a lot of activities down there to keep you occupied while the cars are coming through the finish line. Um, that's also posted on betterbennington.com, so you can go to our website and check that. And finally, uh, another first in Bennington is the Shires Marathon. And I apologize for not having all the specifics for it, but that's taking place in mid-May. And if you call the Better Bennington Corporation at 442 five seven five eight we'll give you some instructions on how to get more information or if you want to participate how to be part of the race uh, next month uh, the June show of Spotlight in Bennington we're taking you back downtown to introduce you to uh, Dr. DeRoma who is the um, lead doctor at the new Center for Health Integrative Health and Healing it's a naturopathic uh, uh, medical facility um, the, all the doctors there are MDs and they uh, not only take you on um, a more natural uh, path for your health and healing, um, they can also become your general practitioner. And um, it's a int very interesting spot. The people there are great. Uh, so we're gonna take you there and show you the facility and show you how you can become a patient at the Center for Integrative Health and Healing. 
Finally, before we take you and introduce you to Seth here at the Bennington Tennis Center, um, we're going to pat ourselves on the back for a little couple of seconds here. Um, you may have already seen it in the newspaper, but if not, it'll be coming out shortly. The National Main Street Program, which is part of the National Trust for Historic Preservation, which oversees uh, a program such as ours, the downtown programs, um, accredits certain downtown uh, programs across the country. There's 2,300 of them. Vermont has 23 designated downtowns. And uh, the National Main Street Association has awarded accreditation to five towns in Vermont that meet certain criteria. Uh, a lot of the criteria has to do with our relationship with the town, the support we receive from the merchants, um, the fact that all our committees are in place and functional, uh, but Bennington was named one of the first accredited downtown programs in the state. So congratulations and I'd like to thank everybody uh, on my committees, on my board, uh, all the volunteers, especially the merchants downtown who do participate and support our programs, and uh, the people of Bennington who are always there to support us. Uh, good and bad, uh, we know you're behind us 100%. So that's about it for news. Uh, we're now gonna take you over toward the pro shop and introduce you to Seth Gabriel, the owner of the tennis, Bennington Tennis Center. Hi, we're here at the Bennington Tennis Center, and I have Seth Gabriel. Welcome to Bennington, Seth. Congratulations Thank on you. the bubble up and running. Appreciate that. Um, we're here inside the bubble right now, and I know you've all seen it from the outside, but Alicia and I are bringing you here because a lot of you haven't seen the indoors yet. Uh, Dan, your tennis pro, has taken me through the book. It was amazing watching this place be built just in photographs. Yeah, it was quite a process from the ground up. Uh, it was an excellent uh, partnership with the town. We're really excited to, to be involved with them. I'm going to ask you more about that okay. later, too. Uh, yeah, but the building process, we had hired a lot of local workers and we had an outfit come build the court for us and we've been very happy. Seth, one of the interesting things that Dan was talking about was the installation of the courts. Can you tell these guys or the audience um, what it's made of and why it's different than other courts? Sure. Uh, most courts are poured onto concrete slabs. This is actually built from uh, crushed asphalt. Mm -hmm. So the, co the, uh, the term of the court is a Cushion Extreme tennis court. Cushion Extreme Cushion is Cushion Extreme the, is what yeah. the underlayment is laid uh, crushed rubber, recycled tires that they just manually spread layer and layer and put down an adhesive and spread other layers and layers. Mm -hmm. And then we put the top dressing on, uh, which is the paint, which is an acrylic, which is a soft paint to begin with. And we end up with a really nice, soft, cushy court which is easy on the body. It's easy on the body. That's, That's what Dan was saying. That was the main reason we did it. You Does know? it affect your game as uh, opposed to an asphalt court? Uh, not, not so much at all. Yeah, it's it actually off. makes it a little bit more playable. The balls are a little bit jumpier, which is kind of nice yep. because we made the court in a medium uh, speed. So it kind of, it really allows you to hit, the, hit a nice ball. The ball it plays does. well off the yeah. court. And uh, the tennis bubble itself, um, how big is it? Ah, goodness, I knew Sorry, you were going to ask me that. Sorry, I around yeah. 220 feet by 120. Yeah. is what I'm thinking, uh, but it's obviously a big facility. Yeah, it looks a lot larger inside. I know it looks it, large outside, it but does. inside it's cavernous. Um, I wanted to ask you a question too. Uh, putting the bubble up, some of us saw it as it was going up. Yeah. How many people just getting it from it is a It is to? a mammoth project, mm -hmm. and I'm so glad it's over and we won't have to do it again. We used to do it on a seasonal basis at my past club, and it was a major downfall. Uh, it took about 50 people just to unwrap it, and then we had a core of 10 to 20 people to kind of fine tune and put it all in place. Yep. And it was a numerous day project and it worked out all right. It rained a little in, during the middle of it, but mm -hmm. we got it up. What's the lifespan? These go for quite a while. When you leave them up, some bubbles are, are, are you're able to take them down, but this one will be left up. So right. it increases the lifespan. So we're, I would imagine we have a 20 to 30 year lifespan. Okay, no, that's good to hear. Yeah. Um, and getting back to two things. One, you said uh, you used to have it uh, your um, bubble located somewhere else. Correct. We were in Manchester for a while and we had an indoor facility for six months and it was uh, putting the bubble up, taking the bubble down right. uh, and we just were looking for a more permanent situation. And why Bennington? Uh, I live in Bennington. Okay. Uh, my family's in Bennington. I come out to all these other sporting events and there's a lot of families around. It's a great place to be. Um, yeah. um, it's very central as well. You know, that was a big thing is that we still started in Manchester drawing quite a few people down to Bennington and then expanding our range into Williamstown and to uh, New York as well, and as well as Wilmington. So they come from all four directions. So Wilmington, uh, down, the closest bubble is in Pittsfield? P 
Pittsville, Massachusetts. There yeah. used to be one down in. Uh, there used to be Brody Mountain. Mount, Brody Mount. New Ashford, just south of Williamstown. No longer there. No longer in tennis business. So they come up. We've had quite a few. You know, we're That's still getting. You know, saying. we're under a year old, but yeah. we're getting our word out. Uh, luckily, I was actually a tennis pro down there before I came up here. So, you know so I have a small group that already knew of me. So we got people coming in from Williamstown. We got people coming in from Wilmington. We have people coming in from Manchester. Um, Welcome to Bennington. That was, uh, Thank you. And you had also mentioned that the town was great to work with. Scott Murphy and Stuart Hurd are just stand-up guys. Mm -hmm. um, really saw the value of bringing these people to the area. They did. They and, talked about it a lot. And, um, and just really helped us make it happen. Good to hear. Yeah. So you've been in business since? We opened up officially the very first of October. In the beginning of October. Yeah. So you're six months into it? Six, a little over six months into, six months it, yeah. into it. How's it been going? Honestly, we really met our expectations and exceeded them. Uh, people came. We were worried the first week when it was beautiful and sunny out. We were getting sweaty palms. Nobody's going to come. But they, <laughs> they, they, they came. The people, people came out. Came you have a selling point, point i got to add to you. So when you said it was sunny out, maybe we'll use the outside courts. Yeah. Well, the inside courts are better than the outside courts uh, just on your body. Um, but a big selling point to me anyway is it's air conditioned. Um, <laughs> For years, I've been on the court fighting sunscreen and sunblock, and very concerned about that. Yep. And this is going to allow you know people to be able to come in on the hottest of days and exercise and play a and feel perfect great. game of tennis. Cool. Yeah. So it's uh, great courts. It's heated in the winter. It's fully lit at night. Uh, it's air conditioned in the summer. Um, and you have you you also are a tennis pro. Dan and I are the uh, the tennis staff. And that's Dan Rowe. Dan Rowe. And we'll introduce you to Dan in a little while. And Dan's out there right now with. Dan's doing lessons. a class. Yeah, we have some students that came uh, came down from the Manchester area and uh, been playing with them for years. So we have our normal. They followed you down. Yeah, it's our regular Friday morning clinic, yeah. and um, it's what we do. <laughs> now uh, the clinics you have broken down into we age have, groups. Boy, we do a little bit for everybody and a lot. Uh, we do beginner clinics, mm -hmm. uh, intermediate clinics. We uh, do an advanced clinic called a performance clinic. What's a beginner? Uh, a beginner is someone the way like we like to describe. It's actually more towards adults right now. I'll talk oh, about okay. the junior program right, in a second. Right. But the adult program is we call it learn or relearn, because a lot of people might have played 20 years ago mm -hmm. and now have the opportunity to come play again. That would be nice. So we do a, a great class on Wednesday evening at six o'clock, which has been one of our most successful things, getting a lot of new people in the doors, yeah. playing a great sport. And what do you? Is it group clinics? So we do group clinics. We have people okay. like these ladies. Set up a private clinic where it's called a three and me, where they have three students so and this one is professional. A private. Uh, a private, so we call it a three and me, which is a it's a group it's a group private. Okay. Yeah. All right. So we do a little bit of everything. And you have, uh, I guess, I haven't. I'm not done talking about the course yet or the, sure. the building. You have three full size courts. Yeah. This is the real beauty of the facility is that we do have the three full size courts, and then we have two smaller courts. And the two smaller courts are really unique because it's called Quick Start, and Quick Start is a 60-foot court in length mm -hmm. and a 36-foot court in length. And what it is designed for junior development. Okay. The small 36-foot court mm -hmm. uh, is for kids. I have three-year-olds out there. That's what Dan was saying, and or you were saying it earlier. This, this court is really designed for 10 and under. Mm -hmm. And then as you'll see, we even went one step farther and on the full-size court, we did blended lines, which gives us another 60-foot section. So you can use it either way? We can use it either way, because it's one of our goals is to have junior tournaments. Because the real way you, you improve in the game, it's not just hitting, but it's actually going out and competing. Competing. Yeah. So we're trying to find out who all the players are, and we're going to start setting up competition. Now, when you do tournaments, uh, is it like teams that can come in from out you of can, town, or I'll, is it all local people? That what we're trying to do is, uh, being USTA, a USTA member, we want to do USTA sanctioned events, all right. which would really draw athletes from New England, mm -hmm. Boston to Maine to Northern Vermont to from New Hampshire, would mm -hmm. use uh, would be with us here in Vermont. You have enough courts to do that, or we do. You, have to you know, we would if, if we had a major event, we would talk to Bennington College or the Rec Center about getting some outdoor courts okay. and utilizing the whole town. Fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, those bring a lot of people to town. They really it's do. It's a great, healthy event. Yep. Uh, it's perfect for Vermont. We had our first Meals on Wheels uh, fundraiser la two weekends ago, and it was uh, the best one we've ever run. It was our tenth annual one. We've done it in Manchester for the previous nine years. Yep. Did it down here, doubled in size, and it was That's just a better. Year. It was just a great event. Great so figure. we tested the waters as far as how a tournament would play in here, mm -hmm. and it worked well. Now let's say um, I don't want lessons. Sure. I just want to be able to come and play whenever I can play when the courts are available. Absolutely. Well, there's a couple of ways you can do that. Obviously, you can bring a friend. Yep. Uh, another great option that we offer is we have a ball machine, which mm -hmm. is if you pan over here and look at the machine, 
you can rent a quart and get the ultimate workout. This machine fires numerous feeds in random or sequential patterns. So I could come in by myself, wheel the machine up. You can. And just play. And that's one way. And we also do a Sunday. We do a Sunday tennis social at one o'clock mm -hmm. where it's basically drop in, see who else is here on Sunday and you have an opportunity to play. Is that for members only? Nope, open to the public. And what's it, Everything how much does it here, come in? Let's say the drop-in, how much that is that? That drop-in is a, it's a wonderful bargain. It's $10 a player for an so hour I could, and a half. 10 o'clock Sunday mornings, 10 bucks, come in? One o'clock. <laughs> One o'clock Sunday $10. afternoons, $10. <laughs> $10. Uh, great way to see the bubble, um, see the courts, uh, get to meet Seth and the other tennis pro, Dan Rowe, and then uh, get in place, play some tennis with some local people and have some fun. So that's probably a great way to start and get used to the facility. Um, is there a requirement for what you wear? There's really not. You know, we try to encourage proper tennis shoes. We don't okay. want people in hiking boots or sure. anything like a really aggressive running shoe is not a great thing. Uh, basic non-marking shoe can be a top sider to just a little Nike or a pair of Reebok shoes. Um, okay. We do sell them here and we also have some loaner ones as well. Kids, it's not as big of a deal, but when you get a, an adult that's really running around and moving on the court, it becomes very dangerous. These courts are soft, yeah. so you can turn your ankle more with the wrong shoes. Yeah. So not as much the floor as it is your ankles. It's, uh, it's, it's your wearing own safety. The proper yeah, shoe. it's really your own safety. All right. So I'm inviting you to stop in <laughs> on a Sunday, 1 o'clock, 10 bucks, meet some neighbors, play some tennis, get to see the facility. Now before we take, we're going to watch some people um, practice. Sure. We're going to take uh, the camera over to your shop and show you what you have, or show everybody what we have available here. Great. What would you like everybody to know? Uh, we just really, we encourage everyone to stop in and say hi. And we can talk to you, we can kind of gauge what program would be most beneficial to you, uh, yeah. see the facility itself, uh, and just, just please do that, you know. I mean, I think when you walk in, you actually see how nice it is in here, and really see that we offer a lot of opportunity to play, you know. Great. We really yeah. offer from little kids to everybody, yeah. so we really, there's stuff to do. Do you have a website? We do. We're www.benningtontenniscenter.com. BenningtonTennisCenter.com. It has the class It times, has our adult programs, fees. junior programs, court rental fees, uh, basic information about our programming here. All right, and Alicia will put that up on the screen. Um, I'm inviting you to go check that out too. It's a great way to s start scheduling some of the events that are available and what works best for you. But uh, as Seth said, best thing to do is just stop in and say hi and check out the facilities. Why don't we take a walk over and check out your uh, the shop right now? Sounds great. And see what you have. Next stop is the Pro Shop. Seth, can you walk us around and tell us what you got going on sure. here? Sure. This is where we uh, we house our demo rackets, the rackets that we sell. People come in and we try to put them in the proper racket. Mm -hmm. Proper racket selection is very important as far as tennis elbow and also being able to have peak performance on the court. Mm -hmm. uh, we also string rackets, you know, basically maintenance of the rackets by doing grips and restringing. Um, we keep people's tennis game in full swing. So All right. it's um, some people take it very seriously. The tension of the racket, the tension of the strings, type of racket. Well, even if you don't take it real seriously. You want to make sure you have a quality product. Sure. And um, if it's going to make your game easier or be better yes, for sir. you, then so that it's probably strung is important to the game too. Absolutely. Just like the shoes, just like the courts, yeah. it's part of everything. Yeah, we're a head dealer, so we sell head tennis rackets, which are really, I always like the combination of head to New England because it's also a ski company. So it's really neat that they have a lot of roots here in New England. And they've been around for a long time. They've been time. around for a long, long time. Mm -hmm. Top players right now, uh, quite a big percentage of them actually use the head product. Yeah. We love them. We've really been very loyal to them as far as the other products as well. Uh, well, we talked about the juniors a little bit. We have a whole big rack full of junior rackets. Mm -hmm. So when kids come to our classes, they don't need to have a racket. We are automatically able to provide them rackets. Um, I don't know if you play tennis or not. First thing I noticed, I haven't played in a long time, sure. and I still have a tennis racket that the face is about half this size, yeah. and the uh, handle is about this long. Uh, huge difference, and it doesn't weigh a thing. Tennis rackets are it's 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 a lot to do with. It got a lot lighter. It really did, yeah. and as the as the technology changed, it definitely got lighter. Um, there's different rackets with different weights. That particular mm -hmm. racket you picked up is very light. Yep. You know, some of the rackets still have a little bit of weight, but it's just with more modern products that make the playability a little more, yep. more there. And I, I would always, I always used to like to choke up a little on certain hands. Okay. So I like the design that it's nice and closer to the face of the thing where you get more power and uh, control over it. Absolutely. So I like the design. So I guess that's on my shopping list, everybody. There we go. Um, birthday's coming up in a couple of months. <laughs> um, 
So you have demos you can come in? We have demos. We actually have a pile of used rackets. We have some rackets that... To try them out before, or you sell those too? We sell some too, you know, $25 rackets. If oh, people great. want their own racket to go play wherever, yep. we have that too. You know, we just, we just accumulate a lot of these So if I rackets. stop in, you have a racket for me to use? Absolutely. Oh. Nobody's going to be turned away if they don't have equipment. <laughs> you also have some other equipment that's up what on the wall. What you're looking at on the wall, which I don't know if you can see, is we have a wide range of strength. Uh, different okay. types of strings. We have synthetic strings. We have polyester strings. We have hybrid strings, and we have some soft strings that are actually better for, like we talked a little bit, tennis elbow. Uh, as far as keeping you in nice, nice, your elbow feeling, but we have a specific string for that as well. So we have the range of things that tennis players need, as far as grip, socks, wristbands and headbands, hats, a couple shirts, mm. some I'm shoes. I'm trying to cover everything here because I'm sure people at home have more questions than I'm asking. Okay. But I'm not a member. I'm not going to play here. I'm going to use my outside court. Can I come to you for uh, restringing? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely open to the public as far as the stringing services. That and we the whole pro shop. Yeah. I can come yeah, in and pick up supplies. Yeah, we string racquetball rackets and squash rackets as well. Okay. Yeah. Very good. Now, um, we're going to show you a little bit of the facility and some of the stuff that goes on here, starting with... Uh, Let's start at the junior tennis. Sounds good. Okay, so we're over here on our small junior quick start tennis courts. I want to quickly show you the different balls that we have. This is our 36 foot ball, which is on the small court. Not full. The tune doesn't hurt. Right? Very light, very small. Very easy for the kids to fit. What we do is we take these slow balls with small rackets. You see a racket? We well, would have kids want to use a big racket like this when we want to do something this size. Mm -hmm. Puts it in a proportional way. So the little kids on this court, we're teaching them to do balancing tricks, bounce and catch tricks, just getting the basic form and the line of the rubber and the start. And that's really very important with the kids. I have some very little kids that we use. The ball doesn't bounce at all. You know, just in a situation like this, which is like easy for them to control. We want them to get used to rapid kids control. As we get a little bit older, the next level ball is, looks more like a tennis ball. And that's the first thing I noticed. I picked it up and it feels like a deflated tennis ball. It does not have the same rubberized material. And you'll see it bounces. But again, it's a little slower. So it just kind of allows you to transition from one ball to the next. Once you get into this round, you're in a 60 foot ball. Oh, is that the larger court? So the largest 60 foot court. What do you say? 32? 36 foot court. That's the court and that's the ball that's used for the numbers correspond to it, right? 36. Oh, yeah, okay. 60. Um, it's very easy to make the transition. We'll show them how easy it is because you have smallest ball you each level of the ball. Okay. The last one is a normal size ball that's just a little low and pressure again, but it still bounces up a little bit, so it gives the kids a chance to hit the normal size and go with the ball. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with a little tennis. We're going to get your first lesson, okay? We're going to have you move back and forth over here. Are you going to start doing little kids' tennis rackets? I think I'm going to use that racket right now. I'm only doing this because Alicia's making me do it, and she's taught stuff and making me do it too. Have I known that I'm going to wear a sneaker? Okay. I'm telling you to wear sneakers, and here I am not going to wear sneakers. We're going to hit you a few shots. You're a lefty or a righty? Lefty. Okay, excellent. Let me just give you a ball. You're going to see how easy this is. See how slow that was? See that chance. Opportunity. Is this the Nerf one we're using? It is. These are the softest balls that we have. This doesn't weigh anything, the ball doesn't weigh anything. Let me start rallying it now. Excellent. Ah, there you go. Can I get another one with your feet? Move your feet. I'm going to hit it with this. Okay. So now we're going to do this level ball. Okay. Different sound. Yeah, this sounds like a tennis ball. Different sound yeah. right away. You feel a little bit more on the stretch. You start yeah. feeling that contact a little bit on the stretch. Well, it feels weird playing in leather shoes. Actually, I got it. Now we'll go to the small ball. Small or what? This is the last one. It's a 60 foot quick start ball. Okay. All right. It's a huge difference when you're hitting the ball. Did you see it? Did you see it? <laughs> so as you can see, it gives a kid a chance. Yes. It gives anybody a chance. We've got seniors actually step up on this court and rally in this low-impact situation. Just 
Well, that's it for our show for May. Please stay, uh, join us again in June, and we'll, we'll take you back downtown and show you uh, the Center for Integrative Health and Healing. Um, in the background, you can see the tennis pro, Dan Rowe, giving lessons right now to um, some people. And I think, yep, Seth's a little further behind him. Just give you an idea what it looks like here, and uh, it is a very, very comfortable atmosphere. So I'm urging you to get in here, give it a shot. Uh, you know how great tennis is for you. Um, but before we close, uh, we were just talking, the uh, Catamount Access Television, which is what you're seeing the show on, uh, needs your help. Uh, this month, they are putting out a survey, and it's an online survey, because their contract with the local um, cable provider is coming up, and they need some information. Alicia and I have taken the survey, and what, just ask you, what it is you, how you use Cat TV. Do you watch the government shows? Do you watch the community shows? Do you have a show? Uh, what you'd like to see Cat TV do? Um, it takes about 15 minutes to go through the questionnaire and you just click the little buttons. It's, uh, it's easy. Catamount Access needs you to do it. You really need to do it so that a Catamount Access can serve our community better. Uh, and the best part is if you fill it out and you hit submit, you automatically get entered in a a drawing for a widescreen flat television. So I'm probably going to win it, so you can forget that part. But fill it out anyways. Um, Cat TV really needs you to do that for them. Thanks for joining us this month. I'm John Shanahan, the Executive Director of the Better Bennington Corporation. And along with Alicia Romack from Legacy Images of Vermont, we'd like to thank you for joining us, and we'll see you in June.